السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يدلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمد عبد ورسوله صلى الله تبارك وتعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فيا عباد الله يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه العزيز بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا قوا أنفسكم وأهليكم نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاد شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون صدق الله العلي العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله تعالى عليه وسلم كلكم راع وكلكم مسؤول عن رعيته وكما قال عليه الصلاة والتسليم Without a doubt, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the greatest human being to step on the face of this earth. The Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a guide, was a means of guidance for all of mankind till Qiyam. You see, if someone delivers a reminder, a speech, and a sermon, he delivers it in accordance to the time that he or she lives in. It's the current era, it's the technology era, it's the tech savvy era, and the speakers should know the culture of the era in accordance to that they advise. So it's very rare that what somebody said in the 70s in India would have an effect in 2022 in America. But our Habib, Sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his statements were so amazing, his teachings were so amazing, the narrations of our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were so powerful, they were so amazing. What was said 1400 years ago, the effect it had with the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and whom ajma'in has that same effect today. The same words that our Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned to the companions Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een in an era that didn't have news, that didn't have media, that didn't have Facebook, that didn't have social media. What he said to the Sahaba Radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'een, its effect is so powerful, it is as relevant today as it was then. That is how powerful these statements are. That is how much effect and how relevant and how relevant the statements of a Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Likewise, or even more so, without a doubt, the greatest, the best, and the most perfect book on the face of this earth that even the non-Muslims cannot deny, which is the Quran. I remember I was sitting with a pastor maybe 10 years ago at a masjid in Atlanta. A junior pastor came to try to convince me about his religion, and I sat with him for an hour, and all I did was listen. And he spoke tried to amazingly and beautifully try to present how Isa alayhi salatu was salam died for your sin so now you can sin as much as you want don't worry about it because he died for it sounds convincing you tell a child you can commit as much sins as you want you can do all the wrong you want I got you do as much haram as you want I got you I'll protect you he's trying to convince us all I said was one statement at the end he said you spoke I want to ask you one question there is a book on the shelf in the masjid, it's called the Qur'an. I guarantee you, the Arabic version of the Qur'an that you find in Atlanta, in America, you go to Germany, it will be the exact same Qur'an, I guarantee it. Can you guarantee me that the Bible I found, I find in the library is the exact same Bible that I will find in Germany? No, I can't guarantee that. It's cool that your book is authentic, and it probably is the most authentic book on the face of this earth, but, you know, Jesus died for our sins. Even the non-Muslims will say the Qur'an is the most authentic book on the face of this earth. They'll try and they'll fail. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Qur'an, 
Gather the jinns, gather the human beings, bring me something better than the Qur'an. I challenge you, Allah is helpless. So the Qur'an that was revealed to our Habib sallallahu alayhi wa 1400 years ago is as relevant today as it was, it's as relevant as it was then, it's relevant today too. And in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. These verses are amazing. The words that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose are perfect and they're so amazing. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. O you who believe. Na ya ayyuhal ladheena kafaru. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. What did the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tell us? If you have an iota of iman in your heart, an iota amount of iman in your heart, an atom's amount of iman in your heart, you will eventually enter Jannah. But in this verse, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe. Not those who disbelieve, O you who believe. O anfusakum wa ahlikum nara. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam guaranteed us Jannah, but Allah is telling us something in this verse. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, ku anfusakum, save yourself, wa ahalikum and your family members from the fire. The fire? The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, if you had iman, you guarantee Jannah. And Allah is telling us to protect us from the fire of Jannah. So Allah is telling us something. And Allah chose His words perfectly, not carefully, perfectly. Because He didn't have to be careful. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum wa ahlikum na'ad. It's a command. Not that you should. It's better. No, no, it's a command, a direct command. Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum na'ad. Protect yourself and your family from the fire. Allah has given us a command, a responsibility, an obligation on our shoulders. When a command is found in the Qur'an, it is an obligation, it's compulsion. We don't have a choice. It is our responsibility to save ourselves, make an effort to not just save ourselves. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua, he didn't just make it for himself. He made it for the entire ummah. He made it for the entire ummah. So when we do something for ourselves, we're doing it number one. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu ku anfusakum protect yourself wa ahalikum and your family. So if it's a command, if it's an obligation, if it is compulsory on our shoulders to make an effort to protect ourselves and our family members on from the fire of Jahannam, that obligation, that compulsory action is not, is not restricted to when we feel like it, but it's a daily basis effort. On a daily basis, it is an obligation upon you to protect yourself and your family members from the fire of Jahannam. And the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, كُلُّكُمْ رَاعٍ وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْؤُولًا عَنْ In another narration, the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, that the fathers are responsible for their children, for their flock. And the mothers are responsible for their children and their flock. It's such an obligation, وَكُلُّكُمْ مَسْقُولٌ أَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ That you'll be asked about it. You see, when you put a manager in position, and the workers aren't doing their job, you're going to yell at the manager. I made you the leader, I chose you as the manager. Why are the employees not working? I'm not going to go talk to the employee, I'm going to talk to you, you're the manager. I'm not going to start with your children. I'm not going to start with your students. I'm going to start with you, you're the leader. كُلُّكُمْ مَسْقُولٌ أَنْ رَعِيَّتِهِ You'll be asked about your obligation. The parents will be asked about their children. The teachers will be asked about their students. The managers will be asked about those who they employ. It's not an easy job to have to respond for all their mistakes. It's your fault. كُلُّكُمْ مَسْقُولٌ مَنْ رَعِيَّتِ You'll be asked. So on a daily basis, it's our responsibility, especially if you're the one in charge, to make sure that you're saving and protecting your family. <coughs> now, Samara has just started. Uh, school has just started. Summer has just ended. Maybe it's still somewhat summer. But school has started. And you know, parents get really happy when the school starts because they can they drop their children off and now they're home alone. Now they got the whole house and they don't have the annoying children anymore. 
Alhamdulillah, now the house is empty. Not so good with them. So much tranquility, so much peace. No one's yelling, no one's screaming, no one's telling me to cook them lunch, no one's bothering me. I don't have to clean their room. We say everything is clean, everything is good. I can just sit down on the table and comfortably eat my breakfast now at 10 a.m. So the children are back at school. But see, when the children get back in the routine, their routine is such that it no longer involves the parents. Everyone has their own schedule. What did the Prophet of Allah teach us? What did the Quran teach us? You have to be concerned about the Ummah. On the Day of Judgment, the Prophet of Allah will be saying, Ummati, 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 when all of us will be saying, Nafsi, Nafsi, Nafsi. And for the Day of Judgment, it's okay to say, Nafsi, Nafsi, it's okay to say, I'm only worried about myself, but in this dunya, it's not okay. On the day of judgment, you worry about yourself. يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِي وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِي لِكُلِّ مُرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِلَنْ شَأْنِ يَغْنِي On the day of judgment, you'll run from your brother, you'll run from your parents, you'll run from your wife, you'll run from your children. You're only worried about yourself on the day of judgment. But in this dunya, that's not allowed. In this dunya, we're concerned about others, we're worried about others. And the people that we should be the most worried about are as, as our own family. So you should not have your own schedule. The fathers and the husbands have their own schedule. They go to work, they come back, they eat dinner, they're on their phone and they go to sleep. The children come home, they come from school, and then they go to go play with their friends, do their homework, eat dinner by themselves and go to sleep. The mothers will cook the food, everyone will come to the kitchen, eat on their own time whenever they feel like it, or eat, whenever, or eat in their bedrooms and do their homework, play with their friends, talk to their friends and go to sleep. Your daily routine should involve your family. Look at the life of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam on a daily basis. He was with his wives. On a daily basis, you'll find that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to them before he went to sleep. He had a time that he would talk to them. When he came back home for breakfast time, he had something to eat. He spoke to his family members constantly on a daily basis. There was somewhat of a fixed time that the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sat with his, with his family members. So number one, set a time where you're all sitting together. <laughs> set a time, it doesn't matter how much homework they have. It doesn't matter what responsibilities your children have, what you have. Family is first. وَأْمُرْ أَهْلَكَ بِالصَّلَاةِ وَاسْتَبِلْ عَلَيْهَا Whenever we are told, وَأْمُرْ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَلَهُ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ We're told to command good. We're told to forbid evil. But to who first? Ahlik. To your family. Ku anfusakum wa ahlikum, your family. So on a daily basis, sit with your children, talk to them. Have dinner with them. But have a time where you're all sitting together. Don't let a day go by where you don't sit together as a family. Don't let a day go by, a night go by where you didn't sit with your entire family. You live in the same houses but never sit together. This era of technology has separated us even though the person is right next to you. They might be next to you for 12 hours, you can be on a 20 hour road trip, but you'll be technically separate because everyone was on their own phone or their own technology devices and no one was talking to each other. When we used to go on road trips, we had those small board games that we could play while we're in the back seat with our brothers and our mother or our father. Whoever's driving, it depends on. Generally, the father is driving, so we'll probably playing with the mother. That was there when we were together. And nowadays, everyone's up. You could play a game together. You're playing on your device. You're playing on your device. You're still separate. We're no longer connected. When it's time to sit with the family, I said, family, put your phone to the side. Matter of fact, take your Apple Watch off too. Shaitan does not want us to be disconnected from this phone. Shaitan doesn't want it. That's why I took off my Apple Watch. To this time. Constant messages, phone calls. You're sitting with your family at dinner time and the phone call comes. We live in an era that you can be right next to each other. You're still separate. You're still separate? So have a time that you sit with your family. And I'm not just talking about a physical sit. That's easy. But a general physical heart-to-heart -heart emotional sitting where you're together. Put the phone away. You're not distracted by the phone. You know, I watched a talk recently. 
If I hold my phone, even though I'm not looking at my phone, but this is distracting, your eyes somewhat are still fixated on this phone. When you're sitting or laying and sitting on the floor at the dinner table, if you put your phone right here, it's upside down. But you're sitting with your family members, you're sitting with your children, you're sitting with your wife, but your phone is on the table, it's still distracting. So don't put your phones away like this. Put it in your pocket as if it's gone. Or if you want, buy an auto of action, throw it halfway across the room. But sit with your family, number one, on a daily basis. The Prophet of Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us. So you're not just sitting together with the family with the intention of just sitting with the family. But you're sitting with them, you're smiling with them, you're laughing with them, you're joking with them. Why? Because the Prophet of Allah has told us to. And for that sitting, for that talking, for that conversation, you're getting rewarded for it. And you're protecting each other from the fire of Jahannam because you're opening up each other's hearts and making everyone feel comfortable. Number one, on a daily basis, sit with your children. Sit with your family. No matter what, doesn't matter how many arguments you got in, how you mad at someone you fought, it does not matter. That time is fixated, we must sit together without our bones. The Prophet number two, this is especially for parents and it's for children too. You know, we were in a time of ignorance and arrogance and ego. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he picks up Sayyidina Hassan radiyallahu ta'ala and he kisses him. And he hugs him. This was the emotion that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed to his grandchildren. Can you imagine how the most merciful human being expresses his emotions for his own children? We don't have too much. <coughs> but Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha, because it was pre-Islam days. And one time the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam picks up Sayyidina Hassan radiyallahu ta'ala and he kisses him, hugs him, plays with him, tickles him, laughs with him. A Bedouin came. And he said to the Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you kiss your children as if it's against the nature of a man. It's unmanly to express love. Men don't express love. And the better one wanted to boast a little bit, show a little bit of arrogance and pride. I have ten children, I never kissed them. Ten children, I never kissed them. He's bragging about it. The Prophet of Allah said, he's the most merciful human being, but he responded in a harsh manner. Is it my fault that Rahmah was taken out from me? No, it's not against our nature to show emotion. It's not against our nature to express emotion. It's not against our nature to show that we're happy with our wives, we're happy with our children. Our children did good, put on a smile, fake it till you make it. You see how the nature of a human being works? If my brother succeeds, or my colleague succeeds and he does good, and he's doing an amazing job, he's making millions, his business is going good, people listen to him, people follow him. If this is my brother, I'm somewhat envious. I'm somewhat jealous. But if it's my child, I'm 100% supportive. If it's my, my child, if it's my brother, how am I going to buy it? I don't really care about it. My child, that is the only time that a human being, to an extent, you see, there's some people with cleaner hearts, but that is the only time and extent where a father or a mother will not feel jealous if their own child, but it will be a sense of pride. And I have my son did this. My, there is absolutely no jealousy. 100% supportive. You know, if someone comes and tells me my brother did an amazing job, you know, he, you know, he won the basketball tournament, he did this, I'd be like, wow, I'm so happy for him. But in time, I'm like, how is it with me? When it comes to children, 100% support. There's no chance. So when your child does good on their grades, don't hold it in. I'm a man, I'm not supposed to show happiness. I'm not supposed to cry, I'm not supposed to show emotions. I'm the mother, no. You know, if I show happiness, you're not going to do good. Number two, show emotions. Express happiness. It'll make their day, it'll make their day. It's worth more, it's free. But it's more valuable than a million dollars. That smile will make that child's day. Saying, son, I'm proud of you, you did good, will make that child's day. 
Telling your daughter, I love you, you did amazing, you tried your hardest, even at a time they failed, will make their day. Express emotions. We tend to only express emotions when it's time to be strict. It's easy. We're angry, we're upset, you did this, you did that. But when it comes time to praise them or say something good about them, we don't say it. Ummi Darda the hadith says that another one mufrad. A man came to her and said, Inna rajulan nala. A man, he spoke bad about you in the Abdul Malik. To Abdul Malik, Abdul Malik, he spoke bad about you. He said bad things about you. That weren't true. She said, okay, no problem. If someone says bad things about me and it's not true, I shouldn't care. You want to know why? Because when someone gives me credit and praises me for something I don't do, I don't mind. She think I did it. I'll take the credit for it. I'll take the reward. So what's the problem if Allah is making someone say something about me that I didn't have? But I don't mind when they say something about me that I didn't have either, but I'm okay with the praise. Praise your children. Say something good to you. It's easy to be strict. It's easy to yell, but say something nice. Number one, sit with your family on a daily basis. No matter what. Put your devices to the side and have a conversation. Number two, express emotions. Say you're happy. Say you're upset. Let them know how it is. Clean your heart. Let it out and hear. And number three, have meaningful conversations. When you look at Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam wa Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salatu wa salam, that he asked, Oh my son, Ya Bunay, inni aram fil manami anni abbaqa fandam madha. Oh Ismail, I saw in my dream that I was sacrificing you. What is your opinion? What do you think I should do? Talk to your children. What do they want to do in life? What sports do they like? What extracurricular activities do they like? What are they doing at school? Have a meaningful conversation. Don't say, okay, just 10, 15, 12, you know, I don't really care about him. You know, when he becomes 20, that's when I start caring about what he actually does with his life. No. How is school for them? Talk to him. Have a meaningful conversation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instill love between our family members. Constantly make this dua as much as you can. Allahumma adlib bayna qulubina. Allahumma adlib bayna qulubina. Allahumma adlib bayna qulubina. Jazakum Allah wa khayr. Wa aqib al-Quran. Alhamdulillah. A few announcements, inshallah. Number one.